Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Apple Watch Series 5 and what it's like running watchOS 8. And I'll be answering the question of whether you should update or whether you shouldn't. Uh, what are the new features like? And I'll be not covering all the features in this video. This is not a features review video. This is just a performance uh, review video after the update. However, I'll be going over some of the new features as well and some of the missing features as well. Um, and we'll be going over two, ma two main things, which is performance and battery first, because uh, those are the things that really matter the most. And then we'll be covering everything else after that as well. But before we jump right in, don't forget to smash that like button as always and hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. I also want to point out that this video is segmented into many portions. So if you want to jump to a specific section that you want to watch, you can go ahead and select it in the slider bar. I'll also uh, include a um, list of timestamps down in the description below. And now let's jump right into this video. So the first most important thing is performance where a lot of people think that after a major update like this, the uh, device will slow down. And this is not only for Apple Watches, this is for uh, iPhones and iPads as well. So the Apple Watch Series 5 after the update, as you see here, is extremely fast. There's barely any noticeable difference. Actually, I don't really notice a difference. Uh, everything is still the same in terms of performance uh, as it was on Watch OS 7. So no major difference there uh, everything opens just fine everything's fast everything is fluid the apps open fast they close fast the multitasking works fast and we'll be opening some apps right now and I'll show you uh, how fast everything opens everything is almost instantaneous as you see there I don't have uh, any of these running in the background I just open these now let me close them again and we'll try and open them again as you see they open uh, instantly so that is very good to see there is uh, zero performance difference from watch os 7 again the music app let's open the ecg app heavier apps sometimes there'll be a tiny loading screen for like a fraction of a second but that's about it but that also existed in watch os 7 uh, and as you can see everything opens uh, just fine i'll show you the multitasking in a bit as well um, We'll go ahead and do that now, multitasking, and everything will remain open in the background, no problem. So the RAM management as usual with all Apple devices is really good. The apps remain open and do not have to be reloaded. Where's the music app? There we go. So multitasking works just fine. And as you see, uh, we can close all the apps here. So the speed has no difference from uh, when it was running uh, watchOS 7. It's still fast. It's still fluid. Everything works perfectly. And uh, you should not be concerned about a speed drop as there is no speed drop uh, from the update to watchOS 8. So if you are concerned about speed, there's your answer. There is no difference from watchOS 7. So sticking with the theme of stuff that hasn't changed since the update, we go into battery now and I can say right off the bat that the battery performance on watchOS 8 is the same as it was on watchOS 7. All these days after the update, I tried really hard uh, to see a difference, but I just cannot find a difference after the update. It's exactly the same as it was on watchOS 7. So there's your answer if you're looking for a quick answer to that. And uh, if you want to know uh, what the battery health roughly should be for a two-year-old watch, because this watch is now exactly two years old. It was launched in September of 2019 and it's uh, September of 2021 now. Uh, mine is 89% uh, and I'm a heavy user. So uh, if you're not a heavy user, yours should be easily above 91, 92. And uh, if you're a extremely heavy user, you're, an, you're probably an athlete or something, you should be around 85, 87-ish. So 89, 90, 91 is a rough estimate. Again, it depends on how much you're using. Just make sure your optimized battery charging is also turned on. 
But overall, I can say that the performance uh, in terms of battery is just the same as it was on watchOS 8. And if you're a light user, you'll get around a day and a half of use. If you're a moderate user, maybe a day and a bit more. If you're a heavy user, you'll get a day. And if you're an extremely heavy user, like an athlete, you'll probably get slightly less, slightly less than a day, but you'll still get all your uh, work done out of the watch. And again, it depends on how the battery on your watch is, what the battery health of your watch is, uh, whether you have more screen time what your exercises are because uh, a different bunch of workouts will have a different toll on the uh, battery because some workouts are more intensive than others and uh, it also depends whether you have the always on display turned on now mine i've turned it off but like I've said in the past as well in my other videos, the always on does not make much of a difference. However, the older your battery gets, the uh, difference slightly starts diminishing because uh, when the battery gets weaker, the always on uh, takes slightly more of a toll on it uh, than it was when it was new. But again, I don't think the always on will have too much of a difference. Uh, you will definitely get a day's worth of battery uh, around the 88, 89 to 92% mark in terms of battery health. But if your battery is really degraded you're not going to get these performance numbers but uh, you should be within the I'd say 86 I'll say 86 87 to 92 range uh, for a moderate user uh, after two years but if you're getting the watch used uh, again it's going to vary depending on how the previous user uh, used the Apple watch but at the end of the day there is no overall difference between battery performance on watchOS 7 and watchOS 8. In terms of storage after the update, uh, my watch was around at 26.5 uh, on watchOS 7 and now as you see it's been freed to 26.65 so about 150 megs of extra space there's uh, nothing too major there so don't expect a huge bump in space uh, in terms of uh, freeing up of space but uh, you'll get about 150 megs roughly. So now that the main stuff is out of the way, we can go into some features uh, in watchOS 8, some new features. And the first main thing I wanna cover is the portrait photos, because I really like it. Uh, it basically allows you to put a uh, portrait mode photo, uh, so this works only with portrait mode photos, uh, onto your Apple Watch, uh, kind of like they used to have with the standard photos before. However, now it, ha it has sort of a depth to it, as you see there, we'll be talking about that in a bit. Um, but over here you have a option of some fonts and whether you want to put your time, date, activity, whatever uh, to the complications. And you can add up to 24 photos and each time you lift your wrist, there's going to be a different photo that you selected. Uh, and all of them have to be portrait photos. And here it is in action. Uh, I've just put one photo, but as you can see, you can see the depth of the photo. Uh, unlike in a normal photo, there is depth to it and you can change the uh, font, like I said. Uh, so that is pretty interesting. You can put someone's face or whatever I've put one of those doll like things that I use for my um, for my camera samples on my other videos those squish mellow things um, but yes yeah, you can see um, it has a depth to it and it kind of moves around when you move your hand uh, to adjust the depth as well so that is a very nice new uh, very nice new feature you can find on watchOS 8 the Apple Watch Series 5 also got the new focus feature, which is controlled by whatever you do in your iPhone. And uh, depending on the setting on your iPhone, you can choose to mirror or not mirror what happens on your iPhone. Uh, so basically the settings on your iPhone is basically what goes into your Apple Watch. So you have your do not disturb, you have your personal work and sleep and all the other uh, new features that come with the focus feature um, with uh, Watch OS 8 and iOS 15. But you need to have your iPhone upgraded to iOS 15 uh, for that. Another new feature in watchOS 8 is they have added Pilates and Taiichi uh, as two new workout options for the uh, watchOS app. So you can go ahead and uh, use those if you want, if you're doing Pilates or Taiichi. Um, I also noticed that in the uh, pause or play interface here for a workout, the uh, symbols here, the pause, play, uh, the pause and end, they've kind of gotten a bit skinnier. It's just a minor detail. They've, I feel like they've kind of gotten a bit skinnier, but again, I think this could be changed with the font size setting uh, in settings as well, but that's just something I noticed. So you get a new Pilates and uh, Taiichi uh, workout options as well with watchOS 8. 
The cycling workouts have also been updated, so that is really good. Uh, it is more accurate now, and there is a new auto pause and auto resume. Cause uh, now, when I do my cycling workouts, and I do a lot of cycling workouts, uh, sometimes I just burn into the workout, even though I'm not cycling. It does not notice that I have stopped after a long time. But now they've updated it, so if you stop moving, uh, the auto uh, the auto pause will pause the. Uh, basically the timer and the calories and uh, once you start cycling again it will auto start it so uh, if you forget to pause or stop if you basically forget to stop or pause uh, when you're doing your cycling workouts the watch will now do it for you automatically uh, and you don't have to worry about adding unwanted calories to your workouts so that is a great feature also another feature that currently hasn't come uh, it will come eventually in a future upcoming update probably in a few weeks is the new fall detection feature for uh cycling as well so earlier if you fell off your bicycle the fall detection feature was not that great uh, it wouldn't recognize it I, it did sometimes uh, i've noticed uh, in some threads even though the fall detection was just for walking and running it did notice if you fell off a bicycle but now it'll be more accurate and if you fall off your bicycle you have the option to uh either call 911 call your emergency contact or let the watch know that you're just fine so that feature will be coming in a few weeks and it's just a great uh, safety feature to have uh you don't have to reach for your phone you just can just glance at your watch and let the watch know what's happening uh, or call 911 or whatever so a great new safety feature that will be coming in a few months and it only works for the series 4 and above so the series 5 is definitely getting that feature the home app also got a redesign so you have you now have the option for uh, accessory control from here so your home pods and stuff and also the intercom has been updated so that is a good feature to have from the uh, convenience of your wrist the always on feature now also supports maps timers and uh, phone app support as well so uh, maps timers and uh, phone app uh, support for always on displays if you have the always on turned on and there is a bunch of other apps uh, probably third party apps on the uh, app store over there that also will work now with always on uh, there's just a lot to cover in that department uh, basically all the always on features and stuff so i'm not going to cover it too much in this video uh, in the uh, interest of time now here's something that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever uh, and let me know down in the comments if you know the reason to this there's a new feature on watch os 8 uh, which is called assistive touch and it's an amazing feature especially for disabled people and if you have only one hand you don't have your other hand you lost it in an accident or something and you have no way obviously to control your apple watch however this new assistive touch feature lets you control your apple watch with finger gestures like this using the accelerometer and other sensors built into the watch with only your single hand like that however it's not available for the apple watch series 5 but it is available for the Apple Watch SE, which makes absolutely no sense because the SE is a toned down Series 5. The SE uses the same processor, the Apple S5 processor, which is a dual core processor. It uses all the same chips and stuff. Uh, it actually does not have the always on display, so it's slightly less than the Series 5 in some ways. However, the SE gets the uh, assistive touch feature but the Series 5 doesn't. And that makes absolutely no sense to me because I, I think it should depend on the processor and the processors are the same on the two watches. Uh, so I don't know what's going on there. And if you know, let me know down in the comment section why the Series 5 does not have the assistive touch feature and it's why it, they wouldn't have included it. Is there a hardware uh, thing that I kind of overlooked there and maybe it's per probably not dependent on the processor. However, I could not find an answer to it online, but uh, technically it does not make sense since the Series uh, 5 and the SE are technically the same watch and have the same processor. So that feature is only for the SE and the Series 6 and above. So kind of a bummer we didn't get that feature on the Series 5 and it would have been nice to have like even if you are not disabled and uh, you have function of both of your hands, uh, it's still nice to, you know, control the watch with one hand like that. I think that's really cool. So it's a feature for everyone, uh, but sadly it's not available on the Series 5 and I cannot find a reason as to why. So let me know down in the comments if you know a reason why.
So that's it for this video and I hope this video helped you with your upgrading decision and uh, the answer to of uh, whether you should upgrade or not is yes, you should definitely upgrade. There is no negative that can come from this. The performance is exactly the same. The battery life and battery performance is exactly the same and you get a bunch of cool new features. Uh, it's kind of a bummer you didn't get the assistive touch feature on the Series 5 but uh, the portrait mode feature, the updated home app and all the other stuff are great features to have and uh, it's always great to keep your watch updated to the latest os so go ahead and upgrade your apple watch series 5 there's no negatives that can come out of this the battery is the same the performance is the same go ahead and upgrade and also let me know uh, down in the comments uh, what apple watch you have uh, is your series 5 your main watch or is it your secondary watch and is are you a um, heavy user a moderate user or a light user or you may be an athlete that uh, heavily depends on your apple watch and uh, let me know down in the comment section how you use your watch um, we can just get to uh, a conversation started I guess uh, anyway that's it for this video uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like on this video if it honestly helped you as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video I'm on Instagram discord and Twitter and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video